Currently working on a Ford Escape, aka Mazda Tribute. It's got the engine light on and it's got intermittent power issues. So the customer complaint is that sometimes it drives fine, but then other times it completely has a, a loss or a blip in acceleration. Fault codes after scan that are showing is P2188, system two rich at idle. And P2178 is also flagged. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I find and hopefully fix that fault. Okay, so the first thing you want to do if you ever have a fault code like that or fault codes like that flagged is get to the fuel trim. You have some system too rich at idle fault codes, for example, flagged and you want to be seeing what's actually going on. So on the short term and long term fuel trims down here, I have been monitoring it at idle and this short term fuel trim has gone extremely negative. It's gone all the way to um, minus 11, minus 12, and this one is locked heavy. A quick test you can do to try and gauge where you might be bringing your diagnostic process is to accelerate so watch those short-term fuel trims now remember we're at, at idle see it's gone completely negative again there i'm going to accelerate bring the rpm up and we can see an adjustment on that short-term fuel trim as we do that let off again and it balances out. So I'm gonna bring it on the road test, I'm gonna graph these, keep an eye on them, then I'm gonna bring it back to the workshop. Got my graph set up and I'm ready to go on the road test now. A uh, quick bit of information, if you're doing a graph setting on a scan tool, deselect all the other PIDs. You want the graphing to be as fast as possible as you do the road test. So deselect the items you don't need information on. You can put the RPM in there as well if you wanted. But this is my setup. Bring it for road test, analyze, bring it back to the workshop. So I've just pulled in now, but as you can see with the spikes, that is the heavy acceleration. So when I'm accelerating down, and the fuel trims are going positive and then back at idle here it's shooting down to a negative again let's analyze further and see what we can find back at the workshop i start to do my checks that includes having the scan tool with the fuel trims under the bonnet visible at all times while I start to do my initial inspection. There are many things that can cause a rich, rich condition fault code to store on your vehicle. One of those items is an actual EVAP system failure. So that yellow clamp that you're seeing is me clamp off one of the lines to the purge solenoid control valve didn't actually do anything if that was stuck open it would cause a rich condition but this is me then doing a smoke test now i have put on the screen the list of the multiple items that can cause a rich condition on this smoke test i'm looking to see if anything visible starts to appear i do find a leak come through on the intake boot that is after the mass airflow sensor so we have unmetered air and there is a leak there i tighten that up i retest it and then i can visually see a leak so i find a leak around the egr valve now i don't assume that it's definitely the egr valve straight away i take my time i do my inspection and i start to hone in on a closer i use a mirror i also used a borescope to closely assess it and i was able to see and this is the closest and best image i have of the EGR valve leaking through the gasket. So I've 100% confirmed a fault in that area that needs to be assessed and checked over. And after speaking with the customer, they gave the go ahead to get the EGR valve, which comes complete with the gasket. This is me comparing the new EGR valve 
I always double check and make sure the part I get is correct before I remove the old one. So I check the electrical connector, etc and then it's ready for removal. Upon removal, I do see on the lower side of where the EGR valve is bolted, there is some um, soot slash carbon buildup there, which I presume is from incomplete combustion over a long period of time. And here is the failed gasket in my hand. This is a painted slash coated style gasket. This is commonly found on high temperature applications, like around a turbo, for example, is a common place you would find one of these. And as you can see, it's all chipped, broken. And if you ever have one of these gaskets that you see that, you can 100% confirm this gasket is no good and needs to be replaced. Now, it was at this stage, I also checked the EGR valve for carbon buildup and just overall condition. I could see that the valve was in the closed position and I'll touch on that topic a bit later in the video as well. Right now, I'm on to cleaning the surface area that the EGR valve bolts onto, making sure that all that carbon buildup and deposits is now gone ready for the new valve to be installed what you're seeing here is that new EGR valve go in I make sure everything's bolted up I make sure everything's tightened down cleaned up connectors on and the next stage is to clear the fault codes so those two fault codes that were stored I clear them off the system and then I get ready for the last checks when checking the live data again i have the fuel trims pulled up here you can see the short term fuel trim is fluctuating between nine and ten and that is on the positive side remember we had the negative side earlier before we replace this part i allow the vehicle to idle in the workshop for long enough and now you can see the long term fuel trim has reduced down to 4.5 the short term fuel trim is fluctuating like i would expect and with that um, data collection, we're now ready for the final road test. Just on the final road test with this vehicle now, and the fuel trims are back within the range we expect them to be. Uh, both the long-term and the short-term fuel trims were heavily negative uh, on the previous road tests. And when we leave them at idle, they were predominantly negative throughout that. As soon as that leak was rectified on the EGR valve with the... Um, gasket and a new valve was fitted and that rectified that issue so thankfully we have resolved this problem and we have a, a much um, better driving performance wise it's all good as well and that is the vehicle back up and running in perfect condition with no more issues. I can confirm with 100% certainty that all issues were resolved by the repair we did. The customer came back into the workshop after driving many kilometers and advised everything had been rectified. Now I am ending this video slightly different. I did actually post this video last night initially, but on that video, my conclusion was the primary reason for the fault was the EGR valve gasket. I strongly suspected that the EGR valve gasket was the main root cause for all these issues and having put the new gasket in and then confirming the results, I thought therefore we have the conclusion, we have the result, that was the reason why the um, fuel trims were all out of whack. But just going back to the EGR valve itself, when I had it removed, we um, have confirmation that the EGR valve was closed. There was also limited carbon buildup around that valve and having worked on Fords many times over the years, including the EGR systems on Focuses, Mondeos, Fiestas, etc. If it was EGR valve directly related, I would one, expect to see uh, EGR valve related fault code and two I didn't believe it would cause a rich fault code to be flagged on this type of vehicle but in hindsight upon reflection having a comment by next level auto diagnostics so shout out to you for flagging this and making me uh, reflect on it since I posted this video he stated that he strongly suspected the EGR valve was stuck open hence that was the main reason of why, when that was replaced it was the um, rectification of this fault upon reflection and thinking about it more i think he's right i think that was the main reason for the fault code i 
I'm struggling to think that the gasket actually rectified it even though it needed replacing. So in my conclusion I wanted to offer that bit of information to any viewers that may have a Ford Escape or a Mazda Tribute or are working on a vehicle like this that now you have a bit more information to draw on and I certainly want my viewers to have all the information they can when they're trying to diagnose these vehicles. Again a big thanks to that viewer for highlighting that. I do love the automotive community. I love the um, analytic side of it, how we try to break down a problem and find out what's causing it. And if I can get a better approach on another vehicle because of that, I'm all the happier for it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.